bullshit. The No BS Marketing Show is brought to you by Larimore's Men's and Women's Designer Clothing. Free shipping, free returns. Shop men's and women's designer clothing, shoes, accessories, jewelry, and more online at larimores.com or in-store downtown Pittsburgh. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm your host, Dave Mastovich. This episode takes some feedback from a couple of loyal listeners who asked if I could put together a compilation of a few of my favorite Cut the BS rants. When it shows up and it's out there and we have almost 200 episodes, some people are going back and listening to them all. I had one binge listener who told me over a three-week period he got through 172 episodes, which impressed the heck out of me. But to help the average listener, I put together a compilation of some of my favorite Cut the BS rants. This first clip comes from episode 177 with Priscilla McKinney where we talk about how visual elements are essential to telling your story and how companies need to keep up with their style and look. Ever heard of Ettore Satsis? Probably not, but you've certainly been influenced by him. Satsis was an architect and designer who helped design the exterior of one of the world's first computers back in 1959. In the 1960s, he designed the iconic Fire Engine Red Valentine portable typewriter. Then he developed the yellow and brown aluminum chair design used by offices around the world in the 1970s. He might regret that one. But the thing that Satsis designed that impacted us most of all was his collection of 57 pieces ranging from a polychrome couch to a bookshelf made out of particle board colored in what would become 1980s neon. <laughs> The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York is showcasing Satsis' art in an exhibition this summer. Why am I telling you all this? Because Satsis' 1980s neon is an example of how each era has its own look and feel. And my guest today will talk to you about how important your look and feel is and how visual elements are essential to telling your story. The problem with different eras and the the look and feel is that companies need to be aware of that and update their look and feel too. I've had clients struggle to change a dated look, like a font that screams the 90s for a company that's doubling in size in 2017 and 18. We as consumers subconsciously think of different eras, different times based on what we see, the fonts, the colors, the clothes. That's why movies and shows incorporate a couple of memorable images to convey a different time period. We see it and it puts us right back in time, even if that era was before our time. Sometimes companies need to change their look too if it's dated. They need to fight off their emotional ties and realize that maybe they're the only ones who see that nostalgic look as a positive. In other words, they need to cut the BS. The second clip comes from episode 30 with Eric Walker, the head of sales for Integra Care Corporation and their many senior living communities. He and I had the chance to really dig deep into what happens in the mind of the salesperson. And in sales, we get told no more than yes. But what about the fake maybe? Listen as I talk about what the fake maybe is, how you can spot it, and how to work around it. When selling products, services, or ideas, we love the thrill of getting the yes and hate the dreaded no. But what about maybe? Sometimes the prospect needs more information or isn't quite ready to buy. They might need to reach a comfort level with you and could move to yes if you can meet their needs or solve a problem. On the other hand, some prospects are really fake maybes that adversely impact salespeople, the sales director, and the entire organization. How? Salespeople count on the business and fake maybes repeatedly ask for more details. This forces marketers to spend precious time and energy providing information. If each salesperson has two or three fake maybes, a sales director or head of marketing sales, VP, whatever, might be counting on 15 to 20 sales that probably aren't going to materialize. The numbers add up and the impact snowballs. The sales director pressures the team. 
People lose confidence and miss their numbers. It's a vicious cycle. The solution is to quickly spot fake maybes and turn them into a yes or a no. That's right. A quick no is actually better than a lengthy fake maybe. So what are the signals? While each case is a little different, a telltale sign is when the prospect says mildly positive things about your product or service while putting off a firm decision with some sort of objection. Unfortunately, some salespeople continue to make small talk or mention more features of their product or service. Why? There's no pain associated with talking to the prospect, leaving with a smile and an, I'll follow up with you soon. To overcome fake maybes, though, ask fact-based and emotion-based questions and listen intently to both verbal and nonverbal responses. If you've done your pre-call prep, you'll have open-ended questions ready to help you get rid of those fake maybes. You owe it to yourself to move on to real prospects and provide them with real solutions. Hey, no BSers, you know I love Laramore's men's and women's designer clothing. It's time for you to take your look to the next level. Laramore's is the place to make it happen for you. How do I know? Because they've helped me for years. You talk about combining professionalism and style. That's what happens when you go with Laramore's. You can shop online at laramores.com or in store in downtown Pittsburgh. The next Cut the BS rant comes from episode 68. I cover why you're not as good at multitasking as you may think and how it directly impacts your productivity. The book Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, and the Quest for a Fantastic Future details how Musk narrows the field of prospective SpaceX employees by requiring candidates to solve intricate puzzles and write essays on why they want to work at SpaceX. The lucky ones who make it through those challenges are in a face-to-face with Musk, and they're told not to expect him to stop writing emails or to expect him to make eye contact during the interview. While Musk's approach could trigger debate about leadership style, professionalism, or respect, listening to it on Audible led me to think about multitasking. I'm not sure if Elon Musk is great at multitasking, but I am sure that most people aren't. And science backs me up. Neuroscientists at places like MIT, Stanford, and the University of London have studied how our brains react to multitasking. The results might keep you from scanning your phone while listening. We might think we're doing several things at once when in reality we're just moving from task to task quickly. When we move from one task to another, we ignore the previous task while we work on the next one. One study showed that our IQ drops between 10 and 15 points while multitasking. Ironically, multitasking makes us less efficient. It gets worse. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that helps control the brain's reward and pleasure centers. Multitasking creates a dopamine addiction feedback loop rewarding the brain for losing focus and for consistently searching for external stimulation. Wonder what's trending on Twitter? Multitasking leads us to anxiety, which raises the levels of cortisol, the stress hormone, which in turn leads to aggressive and impulsive behavior. You texted what? Multitasking also causes our brain to burn up oxygenated glucose, the fuel we need to stay on task, making us feel exhausted and more error prone. Wait, did I hit reply to all? Oh, no. Contrary to popular opinion, we aren't good at multitasking, and it's not good for us. What can we do to avoid multitasking? Focus on multi-finishing instead. Five ways to focus on multi-finishing over multitasking is number one, stop saying things like, I'm good at multitasking. If you know how many times I've heard that in an interview, you're not, and it's unhealthy to keep pretending you are. Number two, spend more time doing one thing at a time. Try it. You'll be surprised at how it works. Number three, establish an email checking schedule. Email is addictive, and I'm a zero inbox kind of guy, so it drives me crazy. Block off specific times to read and respond and schedule non-email time. Number four, follow our six things to do with paper and email from last week's rant, and Suzanne will have the six things to do with paper and email on the show notes. Number five, practice being present. It takes discipline and commitment 
especially during long meetings. This next excerpt comes from episode 28. Many leaders think that asking for help is a sign of weakness. Listen as I talk about why asking for help is actually a sign of strength and why turning to professional external resources can help give your marketing a strategic perspective. Many leaders think asking for help on strategy is a sign of weakness because they see it as exclusively an internal responsibility. The art of marketing is recognized but looked at warily, while the science of marketing is barely acknowledged. When it comes to target market analysis and segmentation, a common refrain is, we know who our target markets are. Internal teams rarely have the resources and bandwidth to do it all by themselves. That's why asking for help with your marketing strategy and tactical implementation is actually a sign of strength. Find a trusted expert to give you an outside perspective. Map out what parts of both the strategic and tactical activities team members, both internal and external, will handle. Make it a partnership, not just a vendor relationship. There are other areas in your business where a vendor relationship might work. Marketing's not one of those. It's not a commodity, piece of equipment, or administrative task. While you probably do have a good understanding of your target markets, consider that one tweak or enhancement of your market segmentation could dramatically improve your bottom line. Hearing an outside perspective doesn't make you any less of a leader. It means you have ideas about your company and want to hear an outside expert's perspective on those ideas. Marketing needs to be a focus of both your internal and external team members. Leverage outside expertise to enhance both your strategy and your tactics. Our final clip from this compilation of Cut the BS Rants comes from episode 183 when I interviewed Aradna Oliphant, the CEO of Leadership Pittsburgh. I talk about one of the most common phrases I hear from business leaders, quote, we don't really need marketing or we don't really need help with marketing and why I think it's an exciting opportunity to explain what marketing really is and why every business needs it or needs to focus on it differently with an outside perspective based on their customers' feedback. I hear business leaders say something from time to time that both surprises me and pumps me up. When I first tell you it, you might wonder why it excites me, but the phrase goes something like this. We don't really need marketing, or we don't really do marketing. Then they go on to say something like, because we're really an RFP-based industry, or we sell to so-and-so market, and it's pretty straightforward. But the gist is, we don't need or do marketing. They say, we do some BD. That's the big phrase. BD. We do some BD, meaning business development. Or they'll say, we got a sales guy. It's never a sales woman, a sales lady. It's always, we got a sales guy, <laughs> but we're good. We don't need marketing. I laugh inside. And then, as I mentioned, I become excited because I know they have an incredible opportunity ahead of them. And it's my job to do my best to explain what real marketing is. Here's the deal. If you're breathing you need to do real marketing. Yep, I don't care if you work at a nonprofit or not-for-profit, like a Rodna. I don't care if you work for a business-to-business -business company. I don't care if you're in construction and only do BD and do projects for the state or federal government. I don't care. You simply don't understand marketing if you think you don't need marketing. The reality is that real marketing is about clearly defining your target audiences, who you want to reach and influence, and realize that who you market to is different than who you sell to. Who you market to is different than who you sell to. I'll dig way deep into that phrase, that subject on a rant dedicated just to that in the future, but suffice it to say that you need to look beyond the obvious target markets, then drill down those target markets through some serious segmentation, no BS segmentation. What I mean by that is people will say, we're trying to reach women 25 to 40 years old. That's two variables. That's crazy. That's not enough. Real segmentation only happens with hard work, honesty, and courage. Then marketing involves leveraging marketing intel to find out what those target audiences really want, what they think, what they perceive, and you find a way to give that to them, develop it if you don't already have it, and give that to them when and where they want it at a price they're willing to pay. Then you can tell them about it again and again by positioning for each segment. So yes, you... If you're breathing, need marketing, the no BS kind. Thanks for joining us for the No BS Marketing Show, 
Brought to you by Larimore's Men's and Women's Designer Clothing. Free shipping, free returns. Shop Men's and Women's Designer Clothing, shoes, accessories, jewelry, and more online at Larimore's.com or in-store downtown Pittsburgh. Whether you're a loyal no BSer or a first-time listener, your feedback matters. Post your reviews online at iTunes or wherever you consume your podcast content. Let us know what you think. Those reviews are the lifeblood of the No BS Marketing Show. Feel free to email me directly with your ideas for guests or show topics. Dave at MassSolutions.biz. Visit MassSolutions.biz for show notes, plus additional marketing and messaging resources like our No BS Marketing Weekly Update. Sign up and receive timely, valuable ideas to improve your marketing and transform your message. Again, visit MassSolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions, no BS.